Hello all, this is Dr. Alsup, and it couldn't be more appropriate that the last osteology dissection video would have so much osteology to explore. It has been such an important component throughout this course, and it is certainly the case in the pterygopalatine fossa and palate session, so let's get started. Alright, we're going to start with this lateral view of the cranium and look first anteriorly at the zygomatic bone, which you can see uh, right around this region. And right on the anterior surface of the zygomatic is the zygomaticofacial foramen, which I am circling around there. And so you can see it's a very uh, small foramen, and it is where the zygomaticofacial neurovasculature will traverse, so very well named. And one other thing that you can see here is this inferior projection, which I'm outlining. And this is the pterygoid hamulus. This, projection, this is a projection of the medial pterygoid plate, which what you're seeing right here is the lateral pterygoid. I hope you can kind of see how this is a bit more medially oriented than this lateral pterygoid plate. The tendon of that tensor veli palatini is going to be located running along the hamulus, and the hamulus also serves as a superior attachment of the pterygomandibular raffae. All right, looking at a more anterior view and focusing on structures of the maxilla, this portion of bone that is in nearest proxim proximity to the zygomatic bone is the zygomatic process. So it has to be on the maxillary bone here, but it's the part that is closest to the zygomatic. You can see the suture right here. So this would be the zygomatic process. And um, it is going to be posterior lateral to this next structure, which is the infraorbital foramen. Very, fairly nice and large and obvious. And hopefully we're becoming familiar that this is how the infraorbital neurovascular will traverse the region. And kind of inferior to the infraorbital foramen, but above the alveolar processes is going to be the canine fossa, which is this depression right in this area. Don't confuse with the incisive fossa, which is more anteriorly placed. Okay, so moving into a posterior lateral view. This is one of my favorite views. You can see a lot of uh, cool things in this region. Um, in the more post, so this is the maxilla right here, and I know that we know that because there's teeth here. So we're looking at the posterior portions of the maxilla, and they're going to be two-ish, sometimes more, sometimes less less alveolar foramina. And it's through these foramina that the posterior superior alveolar ne neurovasculature are going to enter into the maxillary region to serve the molar portion. Sometimes you see these a little bit more inferiorly as well. And now one of my all-time favorites, let's identify the pterygomaxillary fissure. And I'm going to outline the fissure. Um, which goes a little bit higher up there, but I'm just going to show what we can see. And so what I have outlined is the pterygomaxillary fissure. It is going to be a relatively wide fissure between the pterygoid process and the, the posterior maxilla. And if you can see that darker space as you move medially, you are into, or it's leading into, the pterygopalatine fossa. What is not visible here, but deep within there, is the sphenopalatine foramen or opening that leads into the nasal cavity. So you can kind of go from the pterygomaxillary fissure into the pterygopalatine fossa, and then uh, kind of on the deeper wall of that region, you'll have the sphenopalatine foramen. Okay, now we are looking at the, uh, we are looking at a, the anterior portions, excuse me, at a loss of words because this, this picture is so, uh, it's so nice. So we're looking at the anterior portions of a superior view of the basocranium or the, the base of the, the cranium. And let's go back to things that I think we always feel familiar with. Here's your foramen ovale. We're getting into that petrous part of the temporal bone right here. 
And right around here is going to be the groove for the greater petrosal. And where I'm going to draw this arrow, or where I'm kind of drawing over, is going to be the hiatus of the greater petrosal nerve. And this is going to be just posterior to the foramen of alley and anterior to the petrous part of the temporal bone. And it's going to be continuous with the groove of the greater petrosal. And it looks like it's heading towards this foramen um, lacerum region as well as where you're going to have that internal opening for the carotid canal right around here-ish, uh, which is how that internal carotid uh, artery is getting into the region. So that hiatus is a, a very small region, but that is kind of where it is getting into, um, how it's going to get to where it's heading for, which is going to be the pterygoid canal. And we'll talk about that in a, a bit more detail in a subsequent slide. All right, we are looking at an inferior view with a focus on the hard palate region. And when discussing the hard palate, since it has the word palate in it, it seems logical to think that the palatine bones would make up the majority of the hard palate, but it's actually the maxillary bones that form the majority anterior part right here. And in its most anterior portion between and kind of posterior to your central incisors will be the incisive foramen. This, uh, this is the foramen by which the nasopalatine nerve traverses, and the nasopalatine nerve will provide afferent innervation to those anterior portions of the hard palate. Next, let's locate the greater palatine uh, foramen, and it's going to be about in this region right here. And usually, it is going to be kind of medial to the second molar. You can see on this particular donor, this individual, that it's actually a bit more posterior and closer to the third, so that's a variation there. But it's going to be um, on a larger scale than these lesser palatine foramina. <coughs> Excuse me. And so the lesser palatine foramina are going to be posterior. They're going to be smaller and they are typically paired, or there could be even more than two foramina associated with the lesser palatine. And this is where the lesser palatine neurovasculature will traverse. And it's within the, the pyramidal process, so I'm just gonna draw a nice P, P right here, where the, the lesser uh, palatine foramina are going to be located. So it's within this pyramidal process, which is going to be a bit more kind of built up and robust than the flatter horizontal plate, which is very well named. And um, it's exactly what it sounds like. These are these flat areas of bone that lie horizontally and where the right and the left palatine bones meet up. And um, the also, where the soft palate, as well as the palatine aponeurosis, will have an attachment on its posterior most border. And where they project most posteriorly right here is referred to as the posterior nasal spine. Last but not least, let's discuss the foramen lacerum. And I'm going to kind of circle this area right here. And so the foramen lacerum is this irregularly shaped foramen that's going to be posterior medial to the foramen of alley. Important to note, in life, this foramen is completely closed by a cartilage plate with a very few small openings. And the greater petrosal nerve will go through this region to join with the deep petrosal nerve, which are going to be formed by postganglionic sympathetics, to form the nerve of the pterygoid canal. And so that um, pterygoid canal is going to be in this region right in here. And it's a very small area. So as long as you understand the concept of where that is and that it's leading into the pterygoid canal, that is um, where you're going to have the nerve of the pterygoid canal meeting with the pterygopalatine ganglion in the pterygopalatine fossa. So it is in this small little area right here that you're going to have that pterygoid canal. So foramen lacerum right here, and you can see on this side it looks different than it did on the other side, and that's all to do with however the cartilage kind of uh, formed around the bone in that region.
All right, so that does it for the osteology for this course. Congratulations on your ex excellent explorations here. Thank you for your time and attention. And as always, please reach out if you have any questions.